magnetic indicator base, how it works, and the two most common fixes. Here's a bold statement. I guarantee you that even the most seasoned professional will learn something new by watching this video. What actually is covered in this video? We are going to repair the two most common problems that you have with your magnetic base. What are those two common problems? Strip thread and a broken arm. So the on off arm, when you drop it, sometimes they break. And in doing so, I'm also going to explain how the magnet works inside. So basically, the magic inside the box. At the end of this video, there's a sneak peek at video number two that shows the final product. Okay, before we get started, please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. Okay, so let's take a look and see what we have here. So if we look at this guy here, right here, these threads are stripped out. There's no threads left in here. Okay, so this guy is almost useless and they're not expensive, so most people will throw them away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little bit different. I want to turn this into a better product than what it was originally. Okay, how am I going to do that? One step at a time. First, I'm going to retap this thread here to uh, 3 8 16. Okay, so what's the first problem that we have? Well, I need to drill this open, so I'm going to probably be using a 5 16 drill. Well, if we take a look down there, do you see how the magnet turns? And that's a solid chunk of magnet that's turning. I don't want to drill into that. But then again, there's only like 200 thou depth here that I can thread in, thread this guy in. So my problem is, do I take this apart or not? So let's take a look and see what one of these guys actually looks like when we take it apart. I just so happen to have a magnetic barrel. You can see the two poles. This little tab goes on the back. And then, oh. <laughs> then the tab goes on the back inside here to keep it spread, spread out. And allows you to turn the knob. What had happened is someone dropped this and broke the handle off here and the faceplate apparently. So now we know what it looks like. So I need to remove this faceplate here, pull it off, take out the two screws here to pull off this plate. Hopefully I can strip this sticker off without cutting myself. That would be nice. I can always glue the sticker back on. Surprisingly, that was easier than I thought. There's a piece of foam here. Now this guy's not just going to jump out. So what you have to do is kind of trick it a small amount. As you slam this thing down, you want to put something in the hole here to stop it from getting sucked back in. And then pull this out after you have a little bit of grip on there. So I don't think I can do this on camera without smashing a finger. Okay, that guy's out there. So now I can oh. Okay, magnets are fun. <laughs> now I can guilt free drill this out and tap this guy. Okay, so I have tapped this guy here uh, 
363816. Reassembly. Time to put her back together. Okay, now that I have my hole drilled and tapped here, oh look, we got a little something stuck on there. Stuck onto the actual bolt. Okay, so now let's install our spacer plate here. You can go this way or it can go this way, it doesn't matter. All it does is stop it from slamming up and sticking up against the other side. So now I'm about ready to put this in. So what I want to do is put a little bit of lithium grease along the outside just to help it spin around. And we'll put some on this back plate here on the back side as well. Oh, and in the hole it goes. We take our piece of foam. in, put our plate on, okay, that works, Need to add some contact cement to this. Yeah, I think I do. Okay, we have our sticker here. We got a little bit of contact cement. Just gonna smear this on because I got my gloves on. that set up for a minute. Boom. How does it work? Let's discover the magic inside the box. Well, let's now talk about how this actually works, okay? Most people think, oh, there's a barrel in here, magnet positive, negative, so when it turns on, it works, and when it doesn't, it doesn't work. That's not quite how it is. This is actually three pieces of metal. So if we take a look on the inside here, I'll shine a light here, you can see that. Do you see clearly how that's separate pieces of metal? This here is also another piece of metal. And you can also see the lines going along here. Okay, my regular magnet's not strong enough to depict it, so these super magnets here, very strong, very strong, not at all here, this is nothing. So this center piece is aluminum, and this is steel, and this is steel. Let's take a look at the magnet itself here for a second. As you can see, or hopefully you can see, there's a split across here. So what you have is you have, in this case, a south end here, sorry, a north end here, which it doesn't want to stick. And then you have, if you flip this 180 degrees here, you have a south end here, and the north will stick to it. Okay, so what we want is we want the flux lines. So when we turn this guy this way, oh, the flux line that flows across from side to side here is broken by this piece of aluminum. But when we turn it this way, sideways, it is no longer broken. 
So therefore, this is the on position here. And when we turn this this way, that is the off position. So on position here. Let's see if we can see the magnetic flux from this magnet. This is not a very strong magnet. So we're gonna put a piece of paper over top. I'll only put one. Now, this is just grindings that I have for my grinder that I picked up. So some particles will be longer than others. But if you take a look, here's the outline of the magnet here. What we want to see is kind of arcing, some kind of arcing. Do we see how we get circles around the poles? Now keep in mind, if I had the same size grit, this would work a lot better. Do we see how we're getting circling around the poles, around the ends, and then circling here? So you can see the magnetic flux lines. Okay, you've broken the on off switch, or even better yet, someone's broken it for you. This is one way of fixing it. Okay, let's recreate the knob. Now, unfortunately, we cannot recreate the knob exactly the same way because that piece was plastic injected. So what we need to do is recreate it slightly different so that it can be produced on the 3D printer. So I started out with the base, added a couple fillets. The reason why I put the fillets in is so that I can remove it from the build plate. Add an extruded boss. That's fine. Come through here. Added some clearance holes for, for screws to fit in. I could have glued it, but I thought, well, it could break, and I could add some ribs to reinforce it. But I thought three screws, something simple, there's not a lot of pressure on it. So this is the bottom piece that fits inside of the magnet. This here is the actual on-off switch that it fits into. So when we have the mechanism, it'll lock inside of here. And we have the knob. This is just, there's no plans for it. I just freelance built this. Then we have the assembly. So the idea when the knob turns to a certain location, it locks in. And then when it swings around here, it locks in as well. So when I have all of this done, I save each one as an STL file and I import it into the 3D printer. So let's go back here. Our file looks like this, so all three pieces are in. They're all on the table. I've selected which printer head to use. Print. All I'm doing for printing is just using the, the standard that comes with the machine if I wanted a finer print, but it takes longer. So this guy takes approximately, I don't know, an hour and a half, an hour and 22 minutes. I take the G-code, save the G-code, put it into the machine, and it prints. So this is going to build layer by layer. So as I bring this guy down, we'll zoom in a little bit. Okay. Going to build layer by layer and it's hollow on the inside. Now this is the first time I've ever built with letters facing down and it doesn't come out so bad but you can if we zoom in you can see that there is little problems here even before we start so I am going to have surface finish issues but for what it is I'm okay with that. Okay, builds up to there. Okay, let's print this guy.
Okay, it's assembly time now. So we take our pieces here. This guy goes in the back like this. Snap it in. Turns nice and smooth. This guy up here. This guy here in the off position. So that guy's going to be in the off position here. Oh, over there. Line our holes up here. One, two, three. On off. Let's give it a test here. We're in the off position. Switch this over to the on position here. Okay. Switch that back to the off position. Oh, need to put that in. That'll just make everything a little bit firmer. A sneak peek at video number two. And as a special thanks to those that stuck around to the end of the video, here's a sneak peek at part two. I decided to make my own arms. And it does come with interchangeable arms. So you can have plunge indicator style, finger indicator style, or you can put whatever type of tooling end you want on the end of this guy. So if you wanted to put a light on, you could put a light on. If you wanted to put a chip guard on, you could put a chip guard on. Or any other type of tooling accessory you want to put on. Hey, what did you think of the video? Let me know by leaving a comment. And if you didn't learn something in this video, most definitely leave a comment. If you have other ideas for videos or questions, leave a comment. Do you want to see other great videos? Check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. And if you have not already, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great night.